just remind everybody, obviously, these meetings are recorded as well, so um, bear that in mind. Chairman, we're now live, so we can start the meeting. Thank you, Angela. Good evening, everybody. I'm just going to read something out um, before we start the meeting. Um, welcome to this virtual meeting of Cornwall Council's Harbours Board. Before consideration of today's business, I will outline the, the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams, and it is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may choose to use their video. If the Council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded on a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I will adjourn for a short period to try to establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I will remind you to switch on your microphone. If you, for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic Officer will advise you. Votes will be taken by roll call and the result announced by the Democratic Services Officer. Where a member has declared a non-registrable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest or interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they will be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting is that committee members who wish to speak on an item should indicate by typing X in the chat box. And this is the end of the announcement. So before we start today's business, I will now ask the Democratic Services Officer to confirm members and officers attendance. Thank you. Can the um, Cornwall Council members give their name and electoral division and the other members give their name and um, what role they have on the committee? Councillor Evans. Councillor Jeffrey Evans. Councillor Palmer Thorwenning. Councillor Brown. Yeah. Councillor Jeff Brown. Um, I'm Cabinet Member for Transport and represent Newquay Central. Councillor May. Councillor May, Penryn West. Councillor Nolan. Uh, Rob Nolan, Truro Rudanik. Councillor Rich. Lowick Rich, Truro Rich Thank you. Councillor Robinson. Richard Robinson, St Ives East. Thank you. Uh, Tony Gerd. Tony Gerd, independent, and I'm living in Butte. Thank you. Tristan Jones. Yep, yeah, Tristan Jones, and I'm independent. Uh, Jeff Wilson. Uh, independent and living in uh, Glasgow. Thank you. Phil Allen. Uh, Phil Allen, uh, Chairman of the Ports of Turin Penryn Harbour Forum. Thank you. Um, I'll also outline which officers are here today. There's myself, Angela Saunders from Democratic Services. We have Chris Jones, the Maritime Manager. Mm -hmm. Mark Killingback, the Harbour Master for Truro and Penryn, Michael Ridgway, the Harbour Master for St Ives and Newquay, and Sarah Goodall is live streaming the meeting. Thank you, Chairman. OK, brilliant. Um, that's that's great, Angela. And um, once again, welcome everybody to um, this evening's Harbours Board meeting. Um, I'm sorry it's virtual still, um, but I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll try and make the best of it. And I, I can see it's still light outside as well, so, you know, Days are getting longer, so something for us to look forward to at least. Um, I'm going to start with, um, sorry, did we just do apologies for absence, Angela? I can't remember. No. No. Um, yeah, I've had sorry, two apologies. It says it both of these things, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I've had apologies from John Wilson and Ryan Kitchener. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, any more apologies from the floor, please? Um, no. Can I just... Um, can I just interrupt? I'm joined by phone because I'm having a computer nightmare. Is that Ian? Yes, it is. Yeah. John Brilliant. Oh, I was wondering where you were. Great. Thank you very much. That's 
Ian, Ian Shipley is in attendance, Angela. Thank you, I've made a note of that. Thank you, uh, Ian, good to hear from you. Yeah, okay, can I have declarations of interest, please? From members regarding um, tonight's agenda. Just to let you know, Ian, if you can hear me, um, if you if you have any technical issues, um, it seems like you've kind of had some, um, but you're you're kind of in via the phone. Um, there is a number to call. It's 01872 324 498. Do you want me to repeat that? I know I've got that. Thanks, mate. Brilliant. Um, and there's someone at the end of the line now who can um, sort you out, hopefully. Um, Right, everybody, we're going to go to page five on the agenda and I'm just going to take us through the minutes of the last meeting that we had. That was on the 19th of November um, last year. So if we could go to page five, I'll go through page by page just for accuracy. Um, don't need to have a debate on any of it. Um, but obviously, if there's any glaring mistakes, please let me know. Um, so starting on page five, um, page six. Page seven, page eight, page nine, page ten, page eleven, and that's um, that's it. I think just need a mover and a seconder for the minutes, please, preferably from people who are at the meeting. That's uh, Councillor May is, I think, is proposing. And Tony is seconding. So, and I'm just thinking, for, rather yeah, than do the wrong. Yeah, I was going to say, um, for the minutes, the hands. meetings, we're just doing raised yeah. hands. So I can yes. see, yeah. That's great. Brilliant, because we did it in full council. So basically, unless anyone's, please, could we have um, raised hands for everyone that's in favour? Of the, that we approve those um, thingies. If somebody wants to vote against or whatever, please just put it in the chat box or call out. We've got four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight of us so far. So I, that that's moved. Is that okay, Angela? Yeah, that's Thank you. moved. I think we could just lower their hands again. Yeah. OK, all the hands are lowered, so we'll move on to the next item. That's the minutes of the stakeholder groups. Um, we only have um, this evening, we've just got the Port of Petra and Penryn Harbour Forum notes. So can I ask um, Phil Allen, as the chair of this um, forum, um, would you like to bring anything to our attention, please? Bearing in mind, we're here just to note things tonight. Uh, yes, thanks, Loic. Uh, a couple of things here, just to show the breadth of the, the conversation that we have at the forum currently. Uh, we met with Sue Scott, the estuary officer of the uh, Fowl and Helford uh, SAC area. As you may remember, uh, this officer is, is at the behest of Natural England, who fear that additional recreation activity within the, the the SAC area could have detrimental environmental effect and we we had a very good conversation with uh, with Sue and hope that we as a forum will work with her and the harbour to um, to help draw up plans for mitigation of any of those effects so that's uh, I think good news um, uh, item three disability we, we we had a good discussion over uh, how we might be able to improve disability access uh, to the harbour. I know that's something that the harbour team are working on as well in terms of ferry ferry access uh, and whatever, and that's going to, to, to carry on. And then a third item um, uh, drawn to our attention by our canoe club member uh, is really the water quality uh, in the area. Some uh, members of the board might be aware that um, uh, one river has been designated within the UK as a bathing water. Uh, we have a bathing water uh, designation within Restrongit Creek, uh, but with the sort of new 
um, uh, activities within our harbour of wild swimming, canoeing, paddle boarding, uh, the aspect of, of, of water quality for those people using um, the rivers is, is coming to the fore. Just one last element uh, is an update on the Pacific oyster uh, situation. Members will be aware that uh, they've they've been funding uh, the Cornwall Wildlife Trust uh, in an initiative initiative to survey and actually control Pacific oysters uh, within the Fal area uh, under the auspices and the control of Natural England. And there, I attended a stakeholders meeting of that um, on the 25th of November, uh, where we were told that the uh, surveying and statistical modelling has demonstrated that culling is an effective control measure. Uh, and although the team, this is Natural England team, uh, view Pacific oysters as a dangerous and invasive species, uh, it looks as though we may uh, have a good um, option for controlling them within the fowl, although it appears throughout the country that some areas still uh, allow license for their introduction, which is uh, somewhat of an, an anomaly. But yeah. um, we were told of many uh, avenues for the use of Pacific oysters um, as a, uh, a fertilizer, soil conditioner, uh, and other things so that um, I believe I can report that we have we have a way forward on this uh, what I would term menace within the uh, within the harbour. Thank you. Thanks Phil, yeah I mean the Pacific oyster thing to me it's almost like the marine equivalent of Japanese knotweed um, but you know thankfully unlike Japanese knotweed it might be that we've got a use for the things so um, can, uh, some, something positive can come from it because it is a I real worry the way they're spreading. Yes, I think that the investment that the, the, the board and the harbour has made in uh, the Cornwall Wildlife Trust and understanding uh, the issue has been money well spent and it will reap rewards into the future. Excellent, thank you. I've got a nice Scott, Councillor May and, and uh, Mr Gerd wish to speak. Um, Councillor May. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I, I just really wanted to say to Phil that um, one of the River Users Association of, of Penryny actually passed away. He was buried on Tuesday. John Inkston, I think his son now has taken over his actual mooring. But he was quite a good um, chap who was pushing forward disabled um, access to the river. Um, and he was in some part a, a driver behind the pontoon, although it took us a while to get it there. He, he was a driver. Um, unfortunately, by the time we, we had got the pontoon, um, he had to step back from using his boat. Um, but just really to say that, you know, um, he was a great user of the river. And I think he would be quite proud of what's been achieved today, you know, by them. And at some point when we are back face to face, Phil, perhaps you could email Penryn Town Council with the date of the meeting so they can actually advertise them for you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. Yeah, I, I will do that. Thank you. Um, Tony. Charles, Charles Gerd, Tony Gerd, you've got your hand up. And you might again. Okay, okay, it didn't unmute. Um, two questions, perhaps I should know this. What does SAC stand for? Special oh, I'm sorry, it's Special Area of Conservation. Special Area of Conservation, okay. And as I remember in the previous discussion about Pacific oysters, um, the method of control that um, you advocated was sort of like a controlled destruction of, of the Pacific oyster beds. Um, yeah, by, by volunteer groups really? Well that has moved on a little bit because we now have a contractor who um, use, utilises them, uh, 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 crushes up the shells to make uh, so lime rich soil conditioner, uses the, the flesh uh, as high protein uh, uh, feed uh, right. and indeed the some of the Pacific oysters do find a market within the um, uh, 
uh, uh, oyster trade because you may be aware that those that don't attach themselves to rocks uh, can grow to quite some sort of size, uh, dare I say tea plate, but uh, not perhaps dinner plate size, and those um, uh, can uh, command a premium within the, uh, the oyster trade. So it is not, as perhaps reported last time, simply a destructive process. There is an element of, of, of useful output. Okay, so it's, it's not all bad then? Uh, it's not all bad, although I have to say the introduction of this invasive species has has created a headache for yeah. not just our harbour, but an enormously difficult headache right the way across uh, northern Europe and um, uh, and this country. I can, I can understand that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Angela, can, can you hear me? Um, am, I, yes. am I coming across okay? Yes. Okay, great. It's just, sorry. That there was a slight delay Hello? there. I can hear everything that you were saying. Okay, yeah. Um, right, that's great. Okay, uh, so, uh, sorry, yeah, we just need to move and um, yeah, Chairman, I think it's just to note, and it, it's not just making note. a decision, there just needs to be a general consensus that the board are happy to note the report. Okay, so basically if anyone's got a problem, say so, otherwise we'll just move on, is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, uh, obviously we haven't got St Ives or um, the Penzance group here um, on paper, but I noticed Terry's just joined the meeting. I, just, I know we don't always do this, but Terry, is there anything urgently you need to bring to our attention from Penzance, just anything very important that, that needs to be aired? Um, nothing urgent I'm aware of. I couldn't get into this meeting until about two minutes ago. It wouldn't connect for some reason, but no, I think I were up to date otherwise. Okay, thanks, Terry. Um, if, you, if you can see in the comment box, there is a phone number to call. If you experience any further issues, it, the, the number is, um, it's Truro, 01872 you've got that. Did Thank you get that? For, for that. Yes, okay. so I got the, the phone number. Thank you. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so um, we'll move on now to uh, item number five. Um, it's uh, the Falmouth Harbourside CIC interim report and an update to Harbours Board. It's a, it starts on page 15 and I think we're going to um, we, are get, we, we did have a presentation on this a while back. Uh, which was very interesting and I think they are back here this evening. So I think have you is sorry, I've forgotten your name already. I know um are you there? Um Mr. Yeah, is Simon, it? yeah it's Ben Mark. I'm um I'm, I'm here to speak to you. Oh Ben. Is it you? Okay, yeah. I you used to um yeah met you before. Um we have indeed, yeah. We have met before back in the, the days of normality, yeah. Um <laughs> which which are soon to come, soon to return hopefully. So Ben, yeah, if you could take it away with your presentation, is it is it's around ten minutes? Is it this presentation? Um, yeah, I'm. I mean, first of all, good evening, um, uh, yeah. Chairman, and everybody. Thank you very much for having me. Um, for those who don't know me, Ben Mark, I'm one of three directors of the uh, Falmouth Harborside CIC. Uh, hopefully, you've all had a chance to have a look at the fairly substantial briefing document we submitted um, back in December. Um, it's attached as a uh, as an appendix, I think, on the um, on the agenda. Um, it is too large a document and too detailed, I'd suggest, to talk through this evening. And as you say, yeah, ten minutes, five or ten minutes of me just talking around it, if I may, uh, and, and highlighting a couple of key issues that I'd like everybody to be aware of, um, is how I was proposing to proceed. And very That's happy great. to field questions as we go, if people stick their hands up. Um, <laughs> and my two colleagues, um, Andy Nichols and Tony Cowles, are also on the call as well. And a okay. to join in. Does that sound acceptable? It does. Ben, what I think might work best, and this is what we usually do, is you do the presentation and then we'll do questions afterwards. I think especially this evening, uh, it might be a bit tricky working out with the raised hands things. It might just be easy if you do your presentation. Anybody at home uh, wants to ask a question, if you could just kind of maybe scribble it down so you don't forget and then we'll do it. We'll do it at the end. Um, 
um, and put it obviously put an X in the box maybe or, or whatever. I'm, I'm also hoping that Chris Jones, our maritime manager, will will come in as well after because obviously Chris has written um, Chris well Chris has um, been um, also very closely involved with this, so it would be good for um, him to sort of give a bit of a view as well on things um, as we uh, if you know if it's appropriate. So please um, take it away, Ben, and thanks again for coming. Cheers. Absolutely. OK, thank you, Chairman. So there's there's three key themes or areas I wanted to uh, to draw your attention to um, with respect to the uh, the submission we put in back in December. Um, and those three things really are the design, uh, the, the concept of the, uh, the structure that we're proposing for the Prince of Wales Pier in Falmouth. Um, there is the critical issue of financing. Um, and the next steps looking out uh, across about a 12 month horizon. Um, and finally, I'd like to prompt a little bit of debate and discussion, which um, I'd suggest can continue well beyond my presentation in terms of uh, the longer term future of the project and the roles, responsibilities and the commercial arrangements uh, that might be feasible uh, to make it happen. So those are the three things I want to talk about. Um, so going back to the first one then, which is the design. If you've uh, had a chance to, to look through the report or if you've been to any of our presentations um, in the past, um, you'll hopefully be familiar with what we're proposing. But in short, it is um, for this particular section of the project, a, a DDA compliant, a disabled access compliant um, pontoon alongside the, the Prince of Wales Pier uh, in Falmouth. Um, my colleagues uh, Andy and Tony, who, who've done a huge amount of work on this, have, have really been driven by uh, a philosophy that the Prince of Wales Pier always has been and should be the, the pride of Falmouth. It should be one of the, uh, the key pieces of the town. And the intention for the pontoon system is not just to be um, useful from a functional perspective, but it should also uh, become a part of that um, uh, uh, pride, uh, that beauty of design uh, in itself. So the two things should complement uh, each other. Um, to that end, Andy's put in a lot of work on developing this theme based around the uh, the, the Falmouth oyster, um, which I think is particularly appropriate given Falmouth's history, uh, given the increasing uh, focus on conservation, some of which we've already heard of uh, in this forum uh, this evening and indeed the national media interest that's um, recently been on Falmouth and its um, oyster uh, tradition in particular. So those uh, those themes of pride in, in, in a beautiful pier um, and, and the Falmouth oyster run through uh, all of our thinking. The design itself, and I, I draw your attention to the fourth page of the, um, uh, the document, is uh, an iterative process like all engineering or architectural uh, designs um, and it's developing constantly in response to input from a variety of experts and indeed stakeholders. We've got the Falmouth Town Council, we have yourselves um, from the Harbours Board, we have your Cornwall Council colleagues at the planning with planning and heritage expertise. Uh, Southwest Water clearly have an important part to play uh, in a successful structure. We've got engineering advice from Pelagic Design in Falmouth. Uh, we've got architectural expertise from Michael Horman um, and on the DDA and disabled access um, part of the, uh, of the puzzle, uh, we've got specialist advice from Plymouth University. That last point, the disabled access, uh, brings to the front uh, another subject that I want to really transmit this evening, which is that the, uh, the disabled experience doesn't just extend to the brow, to, to the access to the pontoon, but we see it rather as a, a broader um, thing relating to the whole of the Prince of Wales Pier. Um, and everybody should be aware that although we are talking right now about this brow and the pontoon design, uh, we view it as, a, as one part of a much larger project to improve the totality of the Prince of Wales Pier. With, uh, we think of layout, access, um, potential new topside structures, and indeed integration with Falmouth Town Council's aspirations for that particular part of Falmouth. Um, in the short period of time since we submitted that report, we have actually already been through one further cycle of, of thought process, largely in response to um, some feedback from a pre-application 
um, submission with the uh, heritage experts uh, who had some particular input on the design of the brow, the specifics of which I won't go into now, but if anybody's interest, my colleague, interested, my colleague Tony is standing by and he does have some stuff he could share on screen uh, to show you the latest design if anybody's interested. Moving on to my second point then, which is uh, financing and next steps. Uh, I'd quickly just draw your attention to page 10 of our submission, uh, which shows uh, the financial situation for the Harborside CIC. Now, we need two things really, two main resources to do what we're doing. Uh, one of them is goodwill and the other one is, is cash. Um, on the goodwill side, we have what I'd describe as a, as a diminishing pot um, of that. Um, particularly with our commercial partners, Pelagic and uh, to an extent Michael Horman, the architect, both of whom have been uh, working either for free uh, or at a diminished uh, commercial rate and with a fair bit of risk thrown in as well. Um, and the three of us, I should also say, are not being remunerated for this activity. So um, we're willing to participate as long as we can see a, a reasonable path to success. So we have a diminishing pot of goodwill. We also have essentially, as you can see on that page, zero funds left in the pot. We had a small amount of grant funding for the for our first um, activities, which have got us this far. But if we're going to progress at all in 2021, we need more money. And the suggested amount that we've put is at the bottom of that page. It's just under £20,000, which is what we are suggesting it would take to get through all of the items on that list. That's really important because clearly the project itself is going to require an awful lot more money than that. But in order to successfully bid uh, for grant funding from the various um, sources that are out there, uh, probably in collaboration with yourselves, we need to have the project a little bit further down the road uh, in order to put credible bids in. Uh, things like successful planning commission and a little bit more detail on the design are going to be absolutely critical to be seen as a serious contender for funding. And last, just going to talk briefly about future roles and responsibilities. Um, I think this is really important. I, I don't suggest that we're going to bottom this out today, but I, I do want to start the debate amongst yourselves. I, I think we need to consider in the longer term who is accountable, who is responsible, who's going to support, who's going to be consulted, who's going to be informed about this project in the longer term. I think we need to get some direction from yourselves about what you think a viable commercial arrangement might be for the finished structure, um, particularly in the context of the other changes that we're proposing and are discussing around the Prince of Wales Pier. There's a number of um, ownership models I would suggest. You could um, have the CIC owning the final structure. You could have the CIC operating the structure owned by the Harbours Board or some variation on that theme. Or you could indeed simply wind up the CIC if we were chose to do so on completion of the project. Um, we all have opinions on those. Uh, personally, I would be comfortable with any credible path to success and I, I don't want to uh, rigidly um, dictate which one of those I, th I think would work. We, we also need to talk about funding and maintenance in the long term. Um, any successful business plan for this structure uh, needs to accommodate some element of annual maintenance um, and that needs to be baked into any discussions about how we're going to get revenue streams from the structure. Um, and again, I think that links to the other uh, aspects of the Prince of Wales peer development and any future topside structures, office space, retail or, or, or um, cafe bars or whatever it may be. Uh, all of that needs to be considered together. So I think to sum up, we're standing by to assist and, and provide efforts, um, engagement um, and uh, determination to get it over the line. But we do need engagement and we need funding um, uh, from our partners at the Harbours Board. Um, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll draw things to a close there uh, for, for that part of the presentation, but very happy to take questions. And as I say, uh, my colleague Tony is ready to show uh, the latest round of uh, design pictures if anybody's interested. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ben. Um, that brings us nicely up to date with um, what's been going on. So what I'll do now is just open it up to um, questions. Um, I think Tony's in. Tony? Yes, um, I'd be very interested in um, the design concept and installation. 
ideas. Um, that's fairly well up my street. Uh, so I'd be very, very interested to know more about what you intend to do and how you intend to do it. Okay, yeah, th thank you. I mean, the, the first sort of question back at you, if I may, is have you had a chance to read the report? Because clearly it's uh, sort of how much detail you go into now really depends on that. Yes, yes, I have. I've um, read it more than once. Um, and but not being familiar with Falmouth, but I, I can see exactly what you're intended to do. Um, and uh, I, I would be really interested to know more. And if I could help in any way, that would be excellent. Well, th thank you very much for the kind offer. Um, just in the interest of varying the presentation a bit, I might invite my colleague Tony to join in here because he's, he's been uh, very intimately involved with the design process. Tony, do you want to field that one? Yep, I can do that. And if I share my desktop, can you see that? It's a 3D model. Yes, I can see it very well. Yeah. OK, well, this is this is basically what we're planning. Um, the Prince of Wales Pier, the fixed structure, the brow, which is about 48 metres long um, in order to maintain a maximum 10 degree incline, which, as we understand it, is the the max, uh, the minimum for assisted disabled access. I think eight degrees is for unassisted, but clearly as the as the tide comes in, the incline reduces. So it's only at the worst case at lowest tides that you have the steeper incline. Um, the other big factor that we've introduced since the, this, the uh, presentation to the pre-app um, was that the heritage people said they wanted they wanted the whole development to be within the this footprint of the pier they didn't want it to be longer they didn't want it to be wider so compared with the drawing that's in your report this is slightly shorter but what we've managed to do is we've still got the capacity for four commercial boats by just overlapping towards berth number seven on the on the quay. Um, and we've also got in here provision for maybe in the future uh, a bow loading craft. I know that possibly this is a little bit too narrow, but we still can widen that. Um, we've got four, we're showing four piles, um, which as we understand it from Walcon, who have been advising us that that would be a pile per 20 metres would be the kind of uh, amount that we'd need, which is good from a point of view that they're likely to have to be bored into the bedrock. Um, we haven't had a formal survey done, but just looking at the the shoreline that gets exposed at low tide along towards Fish Strand, um, it's a sort of bedrock there, so that's what we're expecting. Um, the, the other thing that the heritage people pointed out, we had shown in our original uh, pre presentation that we were putting an arched structure on the, the brow. They said they wanted the brow to look more in keeping with the, the pier. And in particular, um, if I just show you, in particular, they're concerned about its appearance from Fish Strand because um, the existing pier, these column, these supports for hand railing are very dominant. And um, so what we've what we've done with this design, we've introduced that kind of feature. Now at the moment, this brow is, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm an engineer and I'm, I'm not a marine specialist, but I know how things can be made. And I know that when we spoke to the company, the fabricators who made the Tintagel Bridge, the new Tintagel Bridge, uh, and they basically said, look, it's going to be needed to make it, need to make it in sections in one way and another because it's too long to be doing one piece. So we've designed this in a way that it's, it's a, a series, it's got 
a big steel T-section along the top, along the bottom, and then it's got these welded sections in here every four meters, and then every eight meters, there's a, an individual unit that gets bolted. Now I have to say this has not yet been load tested and, and uh, put through the mill, and we expect that because of the loads we're looking to sustain within what is a uh, three metre wide gangway here, there's quite a number of people can get onto that. And we would like the idea of the electric bu buggy being able to take people down to the boats. So that's all got to be considered and calculated. And this is not set in stone yet, but as we pointed out from Andrew Nichols' aspirations and our own aspirations, we want this to be more than just a functional um, pontoon. And from a heritage point of view, we owe it to the pier to do a better job than just a, the cheapest commercial version that's, that's available. So I think that kind of covers um, what we're looking at. With Technically, um, the bank seat here needs to accommodate the highest um, tides and perhaps a, so a storm surge tide. Um, so that at that point, the pontoon will come up and, and be in contact with the brow and lift it. And this link here is going to have to deal with that. So there's another design conundrum to get through at that point. Um, Another possibility that we've looked at, there's a sewer discharge. I can show the pipe under here. Just under here. I lost it. Oh, I know why. It's because we're, we're too high a tide. We need to lower the tide a bit. There's a sewer discharge pipe here, which is giving all sorts of problems with solids being discharged at times. Seven, seven uh, Southwest Water are apparently doing something about improving filters, but we've got to assume that occasionally there will be solids discharged. Now, we have at the moment shown a minimum size of pontoon from a, a weight bearing and a cost point of view. But there is an argument for putting a, another section in here in order to prevent an eddy of solids hanging around in here. But it, it may be that we can do it with something cheaper than the steel fabricated version of the pontoon, which clearly is quite expensive. But we, we have done some numbers on, on cost and it's, it's looking doable. Um, so, yeah, any any questions on that one? Well, Thanks, well, yeah, first and foremost, that, that is an excellent uh, presentation. It's uh, very, very clear as to what you're intending to do. Um, the one, one question I'd have, I see you've got four pin piles for four pontoons. Um, so presumably the pontoons have uh, articulated uh, joints between between each of them. Um, yes, that would be the case. Yeah, yeah. No, that that is that is very very interesting. Um, that, that, that's a, that makes everything very clear. Appreciate that. Okay. It's, okay. Thank you. It is a little bit distressing that we're still talking about um, raw on, on occasions raw sewage being dumped into the water. I see um, on the on the first. Um, the Harbour Forum, Forum for Truro and Penryn, that, that's also a concern there. It's a concern imbued. Um, so that, that is, um, uh, one hates to say it's a fact of life, but it does seem to be so in, in the moment until um, the powers that be are able to address these problems. But yeah, no, that is fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Uh, Councillor May. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I, I think it's an absolutely cracking idea. I love it. I hope I hope you get the funds. Um, I don't know what Chris, our harbour uh, manager, will say. You know, 
Um, but I just think it's absolutely fantastic, fantastic for Falmouth. Um, and I just hope all the people that in the past have criticised about different things going on, I just hope they get behind you. And just wonder if, you know, the place shaping, which you seem to have started with, um, if they're taking you forward and including them in their bids, because I'm sure they will get money towards this project. So good luck. Um, yeah, place shaping, we are involved with that process and um, have been, and Andy Nichols has been included on the working group that's been developing the master plan for Falmouth, which includes the Church Street car park and the High Street. And I think we're being left to do the Prince of Wales pier parts. The, the consultants have, have stopped at the uh, Strand entrance and, uh, and left the rest to us. <laughs> But we are in that process. Yeah. Um, thanks, Doug. I just just asked, could you unshare share your screen, please? Yeah, absolutely. Is that all right? Okay. Can I just ask then, Ben? Um, oh, oh, Tristan's Tristan Tristan's put a question in. Uh, Tristan. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Ben. Hey, Tristan. OK, um, I just wanted to say I think it's a, a fantastic scheme as well, in, in my mind. Um, anything that creates or makes it easier for uh, people to access vessels to get on the water in the foul has to be something that I would have thought we would support. Um, safe access is also a, you know, it's a big issue for ports. And one of the one of the um, things I've seen around the country is, is uh, harbour authorities trying to uh, put uh, facilities in place that avoid people going up and down steps or ladders and this is you know ticking all those boxes i think there's funding available for dda compliant um, access schemes i've seen it myself I've, I've been involved in projects where where that's been the case so i think if you're you know if you're if you're focusing on the dda compliance and um, access for all i think there's great opportunity for you to leverage additional funding. Um, my point on the on the design is that um, I think you should focus on the specification rather than getting too concerned about the detail because there's plenty of contractors out there which will do a design and build um, will respond to a design and build tender. So I think um, I think you need to have an idea what it looks like but focus I would I would suggest focus more on the on, on, on what the functionality needs to look like and the particular aesthetics and design, make sure that's uh, very well detailed and then let the contractors who do this all around the country, you know, um, come up with the compliant design and, uh, and, and price. I think that's probably the most cost effective way of, of going into the next stage. I wouldn't jump into the detailed engineering too soon. I think it's important to have an idea what the risks are. But. Don't spend too much money on that at the moment. Thanks, Tristan. I re really appreciate your support and your advice, especially with your SME uh, background um, in that area. It's really appreciated. Um, what I would say is it's, it's important to note that with the Prince of Wales Pier being a Grade Two listed structure, um, that fact is driving uh, to an extent the way we do this. Um, we probably wouldn't as be so interested in some of the minutiae of the design were it not for the fact that we've got to get it past the uh, the heritage aspect of the planning process as well as the uh, the structural side of things. So I, I do take your point absolutely. What we're trying to do is get the minimum amount of effort done so that we can get it through planning successfully, which will then mean we can um, put it out to tender to get some uh, ROM costings, which will then inform um, uh, bids for for future funding. That's the, uh, the the thought process behind it. Yeah, that makes sense. That's great. Well, I'm fully behind it. If you know, if I can if I can help at all, um, then uh, please please let me know. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, um, Ian. Ian Shipley. Yes, thanks. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes, great. Um, thank you. It was a great presentation. And, um, I'm foot very supportive of what you're trying to do. I think getting DDA access to the water is uh, is um, is really important and long overdue in lots of our harbours. 
And could you, I, I may have missed it, but could you give me some idea of uh, where you think uh, you'll end up um, once the tenders have come back in, just sort of a ballpark figure? This is, um, I think, what's known as a high risk question. Um, <laughs> I'd, uh, we are in the very, very rough order of magnitude. I would suggest we're probably into a high six or a low seven figure structure in total. OK, well, that gives me some idea of scale. Um, and is there a grant funding, that sort of thing, available for this type of activity? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so this is a, a huge subject which we could spend an awful lot of time on. But I think to sort of just give you the headlines. Um, yes, there is. There's a number of different ways we can approach it. As, um, as Tristan's rightly said, uh, the DDA compliance opens up one uh, avenue of, of funding support. Uh, Falmouth's, um, well, various unique things about Falmouth open up other things ranging from the environmental, uh, the need to invest in, in areas. Um, th there are a variety of different funding pots. The big thing that I would ask everyone to take away from today, though, is that we can't apply for any of those things until we have a credible project. And at the moment, from the perspective of most of those organisations, we are not at that threshold yet because we're not far enough down the line. And that's not to say it's a bad project, it's a very good project, but it needs to go further. It cannot go any further without more money. And so you're saying uh, your bottom line is about 20K to get to that point? We, we believe so, yeah. I would um, caveat that with um, there is a degree of discovery involved in this process. So that right now is our, and that plot that we've planned out for the next 12 months, we believe will get us to a much stronger position. Clearly at any one of those stages, we may well discover some unknown or some issue that requires a rethink and for us to come back and say, well, OK, actually, the project now looks like this. And of course, all the time I go back to that iterative cycle, things change. So but at the moment, yeah, that is the amount we believe we need. OK, well, thanks. That, that to me, sorry, just to finish that, look, that to me sounds quite a reasonable investment for uh, something potentially costing up to a million quid. Um, you know, that's that seems pretty reasonable to me. Great. Okay. Um, just, just a quick one, Ben. When you said high six or high seven, could you just explain what you meant by that for people like me, please? I'm sorry. I said high six figure or low seven figure. As in, as in six hundred thousand or six million? Yeah. So, as in, I think it will be. This is my opinion right now. Please do not hold me to this in the future. And um, that's partly why we need the the ongoing funds to to get a little bit more uh, information. But we believe it's going to come in in the high hundreds of thousands or the low one point something is, is our current thinking. Okay. Tony, do you want to um, add to that at all? I think that's a reasonable estimate at this stage. OK, yeah, I did have a conversation with Walcon, uh, who are currently doing the Malpass uh, work, and um, it, it will be around around a million for the basics mm. plus fees. Um, and depending how much other other stuff, um, i.e. Yeah. electrics, water, or other services that we bring down, there will just be add-ons. But uh, the yeah. number that the number that's been put out there actually, from a budgeting point of view for place shaping, was two million, including fees. Okay, thank you. So obviously today you're looking. Um, I mean, you're telling us that you're looking for twenty thousand to kind of basically get the business, get everything a lot more detailed. Um, and uh, so essentially you've got like that kind of ready to go project then that just needs the, the actual capital funding. So can I just ask then what do you kind of want? What do you want us? I, I suppose what you want from us today is just the fact that we're up to date on it. But obviously, are you going to be looking to come back and ask us for some help with getting to that 20K or, or are you confident you've you found that? No, we, we do not have that 20K. We need that 20K. OK. So are, are you going to, uh, I mean, you know, are you, do you want some money from us to, 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 to help towards that? Yes, please. Okay. Um, okay, that's all we need, you know, because I'm sure that's what probably a lot of us are wondering what it is you actually want. Because um, obviously, you know, I mean, um, I don't think we can say anything today at all, but obviously I've been speaking to Chris James about it. Um, you know, there's lots of unanswered questions like ownership, maintenance, all that kind of thing. And I guess that will come out in the 20K or more exercise that you do. You're going to have to establish 
lots of those things the relationship between the owners the owners or the managers and the harbour board and all that kind of stuff is going to have to be answered and, and and looked at um you know apart from all the other things that you've mentioned um time is short this evening unfortunately so i'm gonna have to cut it off now unless i know tony has got his hand up tony is it a quick one yeah it is a quick oh, one chris, um, chris as well yeah I was going yeah, to come back. Uh, Ian, Ian beat me to the first question I was going to ask. The second question I wondered if you'd looked into is what the potential revenue stream um, of the finished product will, will achieve and, and what the sort of uh, return on capital expended you, you'd be anticipating. If you could answer that quickly then, that would be great, but that's an important question, so please do answer. Yeah, as I alluded to in the, the sort of third part of my presentation, it's very much um, uh, on our agenda. I'm afraid there isn't a simple answer to it. Um, and this is where our interaction with Chris um, and, the, and the rest of your team really comes into its own because we don't know. When we first started this project, we had uh, plans involving topside structures as well, which would have probably provided the, uh, the majority of the revenue stream. And at the moment, we are really focusing on this one aspect of it so i can't give you right now a business plan that that, that washes its own face so to speak um i would welcome that discussion uh, with anybody from the harbors board who's, who's willing to sit down with us and, and, and talk it through um, andy did you want to come in on that at all um can i just bring in chris if that's all right um chris jones maritime manager yeah, thank you, Chair, and, and thank you, um, Ben, for that presentation. Um, I think the, the next step really for this is actually to form a working group with um, yourselves, um, me, and maybe um, a couple of interested board members. And I think before we go any further with, with funding the, the pontoon, which, which is conceptually great and, and clearly fit for purpose, um, I think we need to look at the existing structure of the pier um, and understand the operating model going forward and, then, and try and work up that business plan um, before we go back then um, and, and come to the Harbours Board and, and seek any further funding. Um, I think that, that's fundamental to where we go from here. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, thanks, Chris. That's great. Is that, um, does that sound like a good idea, Ben? Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very concerned with that. I mean, obviously, we know Chris, we've spoken to Chris before, so um, yeah, we, we'd absolutely welcome that discussion. It, it goes back to my point about you know, operating models in the future. There's a variety of, of ways we can make this work and we'd be happy to get behind any any credible uh, suggestion, frankly. Um, I know we don't have to have a vote on this, but is the board happy with that approach, what Chris has just suggested? If uh, if you're not happy, could someone say, or just kind of um, some hands up maybe, just if you're generally happy that we do set up a little working group and um, continue to get these discussions, because I think it's great that people like Ben, very professional, skilled people, and um, and uh, Tony, etc., have come forward with this. It's not just an idea; they're they're doing a lot of work. So, um, yeah, that's great. Hands down, thank you. Um, so, Ben, what what I guess we'll do? We'll just continue the conversations. Look, you, you, you obviously you need some help with getting this funding to get your development plan and budget and everything else in place. And um, perhaps when um, we have a discussion soon with Chris we could kind of see what it is potentially well, I think we'd probably have to come back to the board for that I mean is it urgent or do you need some urgent um, help or can, can, it, can it wait a month or say so? I would draw your attention to the uh, to, to that page 10 funding stream uh, and the plan for the next 12 months we okay. we and the short answer to your question is yes uh, the sooner the better because we we have people for example Pelagic Design who are who cannot progress any further without without more money from us and in fact that they've already gone above and beyond what we originally paid them for so okay. uh, you know, we can put it, we can put things on ice but until we have more money we cannot progress the project okay um i i have ian's got his hand on just just kind of i think I, th I don't know if we're allowed i literally don't know if we're allowed to just do this even if we did have a vote on it tonight i don't think we'd be allowed to do that unless Chris no, or Angela about it yeah yeah we need a report so um my suggestion is basically we'll get ask Chris if he can get a report to us for the next meeting and we can have a vote on it but I'm sure um I'm sure we'd like to help um as much as we can and um we'll kind of kind of 
you know, you have a conversation with Chris how much potentially you could you could we could give towards this and um, hopefully get a decision from from the board. And so, Ian, very finally, before we move on to the next item, please. Hello, I don't know if this works because uh, this seems like uh, quite a, a small amount of money for a huge um, benefit. Can we not vote on this out of committee? Or does it need to come back? Or can we delegate this to Chris to say, provided um, it all looks OK, uh, yeah. allocate the funding? I think, Chris, there's a way of doing it, isn't there? We're just um, outside of the board, um, perhaps with a director's approval or something, is it? Yeah, there would be. Um, we would have to, because it wouldn't come out of um, the Truro or the Penryn Reserve Fund, so this would be Cornwall Council funded. Um, and, and particularly at that level, I think we're going to have to look at that one a bit in a bit more detail. Um, obviously, once the new harbour order goes through, the pier becomes its own harbour authority. Yeah. Um, but until that time, we would need to go through Cornwall Council. OK, well, what we'll do, we'll just we'll have a discussion then um, with you. And so we'll set up a working group and with regards to financial support, we'll do whatever we think is reasonably possible uh, in, 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 a, in good time. Thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate the support. You're welcome. Um, thanks, everybody. Thanks to your colleagues as well and take care and stay safe and everything. OK, thank you very much. Cheers. Right, we're going to move on to the next item. Um, sorry, Andrew, can I just check us out? All right, we don't need to vote on anything at all, do we, on that? It's just a presentation. Uh, no, because it was just a note, so it's not. Just a note. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, so the next item is diversity and maritime. Um, it's on page 33 um, on your main agenda, and it just continues something that we, we did with Andy. And Chris Chris Jones has very kindly kind of brought us up to date on this and done some research. So can I hand over to you, please, Chris? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, as you say, this was a, a project that started actually in November 2018 when the Harbour Board agreed to sign the pledge for Women in Maritime. Um, since then, the Women in Maritime pledge uh, is going through basically a rebrand, which will be launched early in 2021, um, and then it will become Diversity in Maritime. Um, so our, our proposal is that we seek to gain charter status, which uh, gives us a, a process to follow. Um, I've attached the document of the existing charter guide, um, and you'll see in there that we need to undertake an application enter baseline data, establish an action plan that we present to a panel, um, and then we do a presentation with the panel um, and looking at our targets, setting our baseline data and stretched targets um, as we seek to implement changes. But I'd like to draw your attention actually to Appendix 2 as well, um, which is a breakdown of our uh, male v female annual hours, um, which is actually, um, when you look at the action plan example, we're, we're, we've, we've made a good start on this anyway. Um, so I think the next step for us now is to look at signing the charter, um, ensure it matches any Cornwall Council um, diversity criteria um, and seek to, to bring us into the charter. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much, Chris. That's great. Um, and um, this all sort of started when I was at a BPA conference and um, someone did a presentation and it said basically only 1% of maritime is um, maritime workforce in the UK is, is made up of women. Or, or you know females um one percent that's extremely low and i was really shocked actually so um obviously uh, we're doing a bit better than that in cornwall um any questions or comments please before we um move on <coughs> um tony yeah in uh, having spent all my life at sea what seems to be often forgotten for every man that goes away to sea or earns his living on the sea there's a woman at home that supports him. And that's quite often forgotten um, that the without a supportive woman at home, the man is not going to go to sea. So I, I think the, the sort of target of this type of diversity action plan maybe doesn't is, is written by people that don't fully understand the maritime business and the people that go away to sea. That's Thank you, Tony. That's a very good point. Um, Ian. <clears throat> I'm not sure I had my hand up, but I, that isn't necessarily my experience. Um, I think there's a different, uh, uh, a different demographic at sea now, particularly um, in the military, where this doesn't really apply uh, in the same way. Thank you, Ian. That's a, also a very good point as well. Um, uh, Councillor Nolan and then Councillor May. 
Yeah, I think, um, Sorry. Chairman, yeah, yep. Chairman, I'm, I'm just going to say to the board, aren't you lucky you've got me as your woman on your board? Definitely. You might disagree. You might disagree. <laughs> However, I, I wholeheartedly agree with this report. Um, I, I know some some of you didn't agree with maybe the last comment by the previous speaker, but uh, my daughter married a fisherman, and I think you know you are right. There is a woman at home waiting for that for her man to come home, and I think that is quite a relevant point. Thank you, Chairman. That's okay. You're welcome, Mary. Um, uh, Councillor Nolan and then Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Just a, a, a suggestion. Um, in Cornwall Fire and Rescue, we have the area commander, Catherine Billings. I don't know if you know her. She's She goes up country lecturing on, on diversity, giving people advice, uh, particularly with regard to women in you know a male dominated service. I think you call the fire service, really. So if you want to talk to somebody, and we do, we do really encourage different parts of Cornwall councils to mix together and talk mm. to each other. She'd be, I'm sure she'd be very pleased. I'll send you a details and I'm sure you can find them cheerfully enough. Catherine Billings, she, she's very good and, and well yeah. worth talking to if you want to proceed with this. Thanks. Thank you, Rob. Um, that's great. And Councillor Brown. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I would agree with uh, Rob. I think Catherine Billings would be an excellent contact uh, to develop this further. Um, as somebody who's got a granddaughter who's a gunner in the Royal Navy, I know that the Royal Navy are leading the way in diversity and, and women in, at sea. So um, I'm very supportive of this and I'm happy to propose that uh, we tr we work to attain the Charter. Oh, that's great. I'm, I'm happy to second that, um, Jeff. Um, and like I said, this is not about, you know, I'm not on some kind of PC um, mission here. This is just a pure and simple fact. I think just think 1% is really low, whatever way you look at it. And I know people have said, it, of course, it's very important that whoever goes to sea, you've got a partner um, at home or, or wherever. It's nice, you know, that, that because being at sea is a can be a very, you know, I've never done it myself, but I, I can only <coughs> imagine it must be extremely challenging. And I'm sure that it, you, you there's nothing better to come home to somebody waiting for you, whoever that is, whatever. Um, whatever sex they are or etc and um, so I'm, I'm really happy with the comments tonight we've got a range of views but I'm sure everyone's in agreement that we we continue with this and um, thanks to Chris so I've got a mover and a seconder if there's nothing further to add um, Chris are you okay to kind of get on with this is it worth having a tiny little working group for the for the some of this you're talking about um, getting data and all that kind of stuff is, is it or is it something you're happy to do with do on your own. Yeah, it, it, it's something that we can um, we can pull together and we can look at the targets. So um, I would say once we've done invoice in March, April time, we can start to to look at it in more detail. Um, and just as an aside, actually, two thirds of the staff I've employed since I've been in post have been female. Perfect, brilliant. Well, on to a good good start. <laughs> um, Cap Captain Killing back. Yeah. Um, Chair, I'd just like to draw your attention that the, we have a female president of the UK Harbour Masters Association and there are now three ladies on the council. So uh, Chris, you might want to touch base with the UK Harbour Masters new diversity representative, the senior Harbour Master for the Lower Thames, Catherine Spain, who I've known for many years and met during sail training. And just for the record, I've got a couple of friends I chat to regularly because being at sea can be quite lonely. I've got two female friends who I, I've met through sail training. They were watch leaders and other volunteers. And, uh, you know, there are ladies out there in senior posts, so it isn't such a bleak scenario as you might think, Chairman. Just thought I'd bring that to your attention. That's, thank you very much, um, Mark. That's really encouraging to hear. And I'm sure that maybe that one percent has gone up a bit um, from when I went to that. It was a few years ago now, so hopefully it's gone up. Sounds like it has. Anyway, we'll go to the vote now. So hands up, all those in favour um, of the recommendation, please. Oh, Chairman, could I do a roll call, please? It makes it easier for me to count up the votes. Um, yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, definitely. Right. Thank you. Um, Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Nolan. Four. Councillor Rich. Four. 
Councillor Robinson. Four. Tony Good. Abstain. Jones. Four. Ian Shipley. Four. And Jeff Wilson. Four. And Carrie's chairman, thank you. That's great. Thank you very much, everybody. OK, we'll move on to the next item now. That's number seven um, on the main agenda. Morpus Marine pontoon installation, and it's the merging of phase one and phase two. If you could go to um, page 49, and um, it's Chris Jones to report, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, this is the merging of phase, or the proposal to merge phase one and two and a request to use £75,000 from the Truro Reserve to, um, to complete that task. Um, you'll recall the purchase of Malpas Marine was brought to the Harbours Board in 2017 and again in 19 for improvements to the electrical systems on site. Um, it was then decided that we would expand the pontoon system in line with the business plan and we split the project into two phases. Now this project required uh, MMO permission and we were granted a marine license on the 28th of January 2020. Um, the end date for that license is fast approaching. It's the 22nd of November 2021. And we've suffered some delays with um, COVID-19, um, both on lead time um, for the, the pontoons and also the piling. We've also found that the piling contractors are quoting higher. Now, if we can merge phase one and two, we can significantly increase our income revenue from the uh, pontoon system. So it will double to £35,000 annually and the uh, mobilisation for phase two wouldn't be required. We would, we would complete it in one go. Thank you, Chair. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, does everyone understand all of that? It's hopefully quite clear, but um, any questions? Oh, um, Colonel um, Robinson, question. Colonel Robinson? I think this is a I think this is a legacy hand that someone defined it once before. Um, so there you go. Okay, um, Councillor May and Councillor Brown um, have got their hands up. I propose that set out, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Yeah, happy to second, Chairman. It makes real sense to get this done quickly to increase income um, by doing the two phases together, reduce the overall costs. And it also removes the risk of having to reapply to the MMO for a second license. Thank you very much, Councillor Brown. Okay, then. Um, so yeah, we've got the um, proposer and seconder, and um, we there's no further questions. Um, Councillor Robinson, do you mind just putting your hand down, lowering it um, going forward because it's still up. Thank you. And um, could we? Do we need to do? I'm struggling to get rid of it. I'm sorry. Uh, there you go. It's okay. Um, um, yeah, Chairman, if you don't mind, if we could do a roll call. Yep. Yeah, just Thank you, Angela. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that now. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Nolan. Four. Councillor Rich. Four. Councillor Robinson. Four. Tony Good. Four. Tristan Jones. Four. Shipley. Four. And Jeff Wilson. Four. That's unanimous, Chairman. That's great. Thank you very much, Angela. That's um, all carried. So the next item on the main agenda is uh, the basically is a maritime activity report. If you could go to page 55. Um, and I, I, I know um, Chris James has written this. Um, what I was thinking, Chris, if you could then sort of introduce it and then possibly could we just go over to, because when there are some hard blasters here this evening, maybe it might be worth just um, handing over to them briefly um, if, if you think that's appropriate. Yeah, Chair, I think uh, entirely appropriate. Yeah, they did attend tonight at my request for this uh, report. So, um, so this report highlights activity across the harbours and provides direct communication from the harbour masters to the harbour board as required by the Port Marine Safety Code. Um, I will start the report. Um, we don't have the Bude Harbour Master Paul Vincent with us this evening, so I will give you an overview of uh, activity in Bude, and this is from August to December 2020. Um, at Bude, there were no incidents for the period. As the season closes and the weather changes, we are prone to boats sinking or being swamped by flood water coming down the river. This has a negative effect on insurance premiums and insurance in Bude is becoming more difficult to secure. 
as such, you'll be aware, Chair, that most of the boats uh, come out of the water viewed for the winter months. An audit was undertaken in Bude. This was a Trinity House light inspection on our aids to navigation, and that was passed. Notable movements. Unfortunately, the lock remains under repair, so we've had no notable movements through the lock system, which leads us nicely to projects. The outer lock gates are currently under repair and are stored on the lock side. A report was delivered to us in December and it recommended Pinto replacement. We've met with the contractors, the heritage and environmental interest. And I'm pleased to report that we've now reached uh, an agreement to move that project forward. So hoping to see contractors back on site during February, um, removing the old pintles, where we'll then cast new pintles, realign the gates, um, and hoping to bring the uh, lock into operation around about Easter time based on the current uh, schedule. The risk assessments, all health and safety risk assessments have been reviewed and a review of the navigation risk assessment and migration to Hasman. Hasman is our um, online uh, risk management tool and it feeds into our uh, instant database. So that migration will commence during quarter one of this year. The Harbour Master took out, undertook a variety of training and I'll just draw your attention. One of the mandatory training courses is unconscious bias, which is a requirement of the Diversity and Maritime Charter. And that concludes Bued. I'd like to invite uh, Harbour Master Michael Ridgway of Meek in St. Ives to give us an overview on his two harbours, please. Thank you, Chris. Uh, right, so incidents were a number of uh, small incidents with recreational vessels. <coughs> recreational vessels here. Um, commercial vessel broke out from a mooring. Um, the big incidents here are swimmers and pier jumpers, which used to be called uh, tombstoning, but it's now been upgraded to pier jumping. So that's a, that's a story that is uh, is seen at both of my both of my harbours. So at Newquay, no external audits carried out during this period, and no notable movements. Um, as far as projects are concerned, uh, we have our um, software we use to monitor uh, and manage our moorings called Harbour Assist, and we've now in the process of moving our safety inspections onto a digital format rather than pen and paper. This enables me to carry an iPad around and photograph any issues and record them there and then. So as Chris mentioned, the navigation risk assessments are being migrated to Hasman. Um, and uh, I've got a little more to say about that in a moment. A um, couple of things, there's some major works on the steps to be recast. Um, we've got to the end of keeping them going and maintaining them. So we're going to have to spend about three and a half thousand pounds to recast those, which hopefully will happen before the end of March. Uh, so moving back to risk assessments, the um, Hasman system enables us to monitor all our risk assessments, both uh, navigational and health and safety. And if I could draw your attention to Appendix 2, um, there is the printout there of the risk assessments, the hazards for Newquay Harbour. And now, um, when this was Sharon, printed, sorry, sorry, um, is that uh, is that you sharing your screen there, uh, Mr. Ridgeway? No, I'm not sharing. Yeah, somebody screen. is sharing their screen, and I don't know who it is. It's Tony Good, by the look of it. Can you unshare your screen, please? You need to click on the button that's a rec rectangle with an arrow pointing upwards. Sorry to interrupt you there, but it's just that this is being live streamed so people can see your screen. Thank you. OK, um, so back to appendix two. So this is the ranked hazard list. And when this was prepared the 16th of December, um, this was the navigational risk assessment hazards. And the top item there was a person in water struck by other harbour user. And we gave it a, a risk score of 5.7. Um, now, we subsequently reviewed these. And some of these were the involved personal injury have moved into the health and safety section. And we now have a a risk score of somebody being struck, swimmer being uh, struck by a vessel or of 7.25, which we see an alarm. I, we're not currently as low as reasonably practicable. And I think this 
just shows the benefits of this system that very easily shows us where we have a problem and something that needs to be addressed. Um, so that's that's Hasman training. So the last in beginning of December, I completed my MTA 5P Executive Commander course, oil spill response. So that enables me to provide resilient Satro or Penzance. It's not required for my role at Newquay or St Ives. And all my uh, mandatory training is all up to date. And if I can move on to St Ives, a couple of recreational crafts on Cook Moorings following ground sea, same sort of story on swimmers. Uh, although the issue at St Ives isn't as great, given that the, uh, the harbour entrance is much wider. Um, and again, people jumping off the pier, similar, similar story all round harbours in the southwest. Uh, training to house audit carried out, no non-conformities. So that's that's good moving forward. Uh, we have the Smeaton's Pier uh, Town Deal funded project under projects, and I know that's a, an agenda item uh, after this, so I won't discuss that at the moment. Um, and again, we are in going to process of moving safety inspections onto Harbour Assist, uh, and the Trinity House inspections have been set up on Harbour Assist, um, and uh, a, a fairly big project to repoint the surface of Smeaton's Pier. Um, I say there's no evidence of this being carried out in the last 15 years. I'm sure it's almost going to take us 15 years to get the thing complete, trying to dodge vehicles and such like. So all our dry risk assessments have been reviewed and the review of the navigation risk assessments has started and this will be migrated to Hasman and all staff have completed mandatory training uh, in, in November and that's that's the end of my report. Um, thank you very much, Mike. I think uh, Ian's got a question for you. Yeah, Mike, thank you. Uh, just a question on uh, the, uh, the ranked hazard list. Yep. Um, the hazards from sort of basically the second one almost to the end are all pretty much the same. Um, with a sort of minor tweak, the mitigations are the same. Is there any need to have them all listed out separately? Do you think? OK, that's um, that's that's an, an interesting point, uh, and it's always the debate, as, as I'm sure you and, the, and your colleagues will be aware of, of whether you have 50 different hazards where or do you have five and there's some allocated to all of those five. And I think that we will just look at look at those hazards. It's a living document um, and as we review them, you know, we may well decide that a hazard may need to be split into two equally. We may be able to combine three hazards into one. So I, I think you make a fair point and we will clearly look at that because the less hazards we have, it, it makes reviewing them so much simpler. But if we cut them down too much, you've got too many hazards in, un, in under one heading. Um, I don't know whether Chris wants to come in on that as he's more experienced of me than dealing with Hasman. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, Ian, I, I would also add, actually, um, on top of Mike's excellent explanation, that one of the considerations is the consequence. So a consequence of a fishing vessel being in collision or grounding is far greater than a fishing vessel due to the uh, greater number of persons on board. Um, and you will note that that's where that scoring differs. Yeah, thanks. So, yeah, I, I get that. I mean, it's, it's always a fine balance between how many risks you have in Hasman, but I'll we'll just say if you've got too many, um, you, you can't say with the and they seem to be, you know, they're sort of uh, sort of various shades of each other. Some of these, you might want to slim it down a bit. I'll just ask another question about. Um, I mean, it, this isn't the full hazard list, obviously. I presume you've got other hazards around um, other risk to life issues like uh, collapsing infrastructure or um, in environment hmm. risks, all that stuff. Okay. Um, yes, there's there's two. There's two types of hazard identified within Hasman. There's a navigation risk assessment, which clearly is to do with all, all, all things navigational. And then there's the health and safety, which concerns itself more about uh, personal injury and such like. So we've got um, a number of things there, like fires in buildings, fires in vehicles, vehicles on slipways and, and, all, and all that kind of thing. Um, Chairman, may I uh, just share my screen to show the um, Hasman risk assessments or hazards for for health and safety. Yes, please. Thank you, Mike. Bear with me one second. 
so there we are. Hopefully you can see that. That's the Newquay Harbour um, Health and Safety. So you can see there we've got uh, 15 hazards. Um, and the top one, as I mentioned earlier up here, swim out in the harbour struck by a vessel. So that's clearly identified that we don't have enough controls in place mm. to to prevent that happening. Um, and there are a number of things that we're looking at there. And the top three are all about people getting in the harbour when they shouldn't be. So I think in answer to your question, Ian, we've got a you know, person struck by a vehicle, fire in a vessel, public access to keys, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that probably covers most of it. But again, as I said just now, it is a living document and uh, we will keep it maintained and uh, adjusted as appropriate. No, that's great, thanks. Could I just ask Chris as a follow up? Do, when do we as a board get to see sort of um, a risk register, a strategic risk re register? The risk register, you will be able to get an organisation risk register and that will come off of the work that we're doing now. So we're bringing in all of the harbours onto Hasman. Currently, there's three different risk um, risk assessment forms and, and systems in place. So what we're doing is we're rationalising, um, bringing it all into one system and then we'll start that review process to go through. So you'll, you'll probably be familiar with Milford Havens where it, there were many hazards and I think it ended up coming down to 38 from 120 last time I saw it. Um, I did a, a similar um, role in Bristol where we, we rationalised, but for now it's about getting, let's get everything onto the system. It's also bringing it onto the system so that our stakeholders can understand. So it, it's familiar to them and then uh, as we develop the system, we'll, we'll pull down. I would imagine we'll end up with Nuki being around about 10, but I, I don't think we should um, restrict ourselves with a figure for now. No, that's great, thanks. <laughs> OK, thank you. Sorry, my battery is running and I'm going to have to plug, it, plug something in a minute. Sorry. Um, right. OK, um, can we go to the next? Is that all? The, oh, Councillor Brown. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, um, it's a very helpful presentation and congratulations to Paul and Mike for successfully completing the range of training. Um, it's not technically a maritime activity, but can I just have some reassurance that we're seeking to resolve the issue of trading on the Harbour Beach, which was created by the COVID issue this year? Mike, do you want me to answer? Yes, please. Yes, so Jeff, um, I've raised this with Mike earlier in the week um, and we will arrange a meeting with you to discuss in more detail. Um, so we have got the, the usual pop ups. Um, and as part of the Hasman process where we're re reviewing zoning in the harbour, it is showing us that we do have restricted space in that beach area, particularly as the tide rises. Um, so I think probably for outside of this meeting, but we will we will meet with you um, and to, to make a proposal then to uh, property for any lease that is given, but it would be a very, very small area based on our, our risk assessment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, Justin. Yeah, thanks, Jet. Um, if you are moving on to the Truro and Penryn uh, report, I have noticed that there could be a uh, a conflict there uh, in reference to instance and one of the one of the tugs that was mentioned. So, because uh, I am um, uh, involved in the operation of that, so if you want me to come off for that part of the call, I'm happy to. Um, are you? Um, I suppose you're involved professionally, aren't you? So, yes. Angela, yeah. that that probably would be a conflict. Would, would, is that correct, Angela? Sorry, I didn't hear all of that. Could you just um, Tristan, Tristan um, so something in the, um, the the activity report for for um, Chiro and Henrin is um, involves um, Tristan's profession professional uh, role. So I, I imagine he would have to be absent from that bit of the um, huh. meeting. Chairman, uh, I can report some findings. Uh, I, if he wants to leave, I can call him yeah. back in. Yeah, I think um, I think I'll leave just to make sure there's no there's no conflict. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if you keep your um, computer on, I'll call you back. Ryan. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. And I make a request and ask Tristan to stay because I think it's relevant. The incident's been investigated, and I can report that there's no financial pecuniary or any decisions to be made. Correct. It would be that's, good. That's, to, yeah. Oh, in that case, I think that's that's, that's fine. Yeah, actually, yeah. To be honest, yeah, there's no decision, is there? So that's fine. And um, okay, I'll just just plug it up. Okay. yeah. Thanks, um, thank you. I'll stay on there. Just apply some common sense as well. Thank you. Um, so, so thank. Um, I think that was it for Mike. 
for, for, for Nuki and St. I say so thank you very much for that, Mike. I know you've had a really busy time um, and it probably could be another busy summer as well with the G7 and everything else and St. I's not. Um, yeah, so um, Captain uh, killing back, please, for um, Truro. Chair, shall I run through Penzance before? So oh, sorry, start. sorry, Chris. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, please do. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Uh, so incidents, as Mike has indicated, swimmers and pier jumpers were also experiencing in Penzance. So as part of our risk assessment process, we are looking at additional mitigation, uh, most likely to be zoning in the harbours, as we spoke about there for Nuki. Um, in terms of audits, so part of my role um, and having I've been acting hard master of Penzance, I've been undertaking a full review of documentation and procedures at the port, during which I found numerous deficiencies and corrective actions are ongoing. Um, this is largely centred around the safety management system and, and uh, refreshing um, its function in the harbour. I should also draw your attention to the process during this process, the MCA workboat certificate for the harbour workboat to two sisters was identified to have lapsed. As such, I withdrew the vessel from service and we've engaged a marine surveyor who undertook a survey. Now, it was found that the boat required significant work, so we've started a project now to replace that boat and we have identified a potential boat, which we're now uh, looking at the procurement system for that vessel. Um, we also had a Trinity House audit on the 1st of December. No non-conformities and all aids to navigation were found to be in good order at the time of the audit. The security plan also was audited on the 10th of December and a number of deficiencies were found. The corrective actions are ongoing with the assistance of a specialist consultant. I'd just like to thank Mark Killingback for standing in as the Port Security Officer for Penzance. Um, notable movements, the Salonian entered dry dock, and if any of you have, have been online, you might well see some excellent video footage and aerial pictures of the vessel entering dry dock. We have a tall ship relocating from Charlestown to Penzance due to arrive with us. It's probably going to be a late January or very early February, and that's intended to stay with us for the season. Fish landings have remained steady between August and December, but I will say that since January, we have noticed a decline in, in volumes and the values of the fish landed. Um, as with Niki and St. Ives, safety inspections are being set up on Harbour Assist, so inspections will be digital going forward. Navigation risk assessments being migrated onto Hasman, and the mapping of all harbour asset, uh, more the uh, mapping of all harbour assets via Harbour Assist is underway, during which we found a number of vacant moorings in the outer harbour. So we'll be contacting um, numerous um, potential berth holders who are on our waiting list for a mooring in Penzance very soon. A major works programme is still ongoing to secure the long-term integrity of the harbour, focused on the dock gate and the control systems, but there will be some other works going on around that. And the minor works programme is currently underway, focusing on the revetment at the car park, but also pointing of the walls. And just recently, the Ross Bridge hydraulic system was uh, refurbished. And if you're in Penzance tomorrow, very sorry, but there'll be a traffic jam as we, we test it. So. Um, and we're also looking at opportunities with the town deal, which I'll talk about on the next report. Uh, training, all staff mandatory training was completed in November, and I undertook uh, mental health first aid training um, again during this period. If I can hand over now, Chair, to Mark Killenbach for a report on Truro and Penryn. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Mark. Thank you, Chairman. Just turn my camera on. Um, so uh, I've got two incidents listed. One of them is um, potentially health and safety. It relates to noise from a large um, cross-channel ferry that we that arrived in the port. Um, I strongly recommended they came with a um, skid mounted or a, con a contained generator. The vessel did have a uh, history of noise complaints. Unfortunately, the vessel was diverted to uh, operations. She came out of warm layup in Leith, came via Dover, stood in for a sister vessel for some time and then rushed into, um, into layup with very little time alongside in Falmouth. It was quite difficult to deal with. It involved um, dealing with significant stakeholders. Um, we tried and we did engage with them. We were also involved in engaging with the um, uh, environmental health colleagues within Cornwall Council. There is some resolution and hopefully we've we've been open and transparent with the stakeholders and work with them. So we've resolved some of the, um, the complaints there. Um, 
the uh, issue that uh, Driston was concerned about was investigated. I'm the chair of the FAL Estuary Marine Safety Committee. Um, we have rotating chairs in the estuary. I'm the current um, uh, holder of that position. Um, I opened it to um, operational staff from the docks and to um, a pilot. And um, it turns out there was probably a human factor in all of this. Uh, one of the pilots had a, a very uh, nice racy car carrier. And once he got past turnaware, it had a fine hull form, very little wash and was um, actually uh, going at some considerable speed. Unfortunately, um, well, it's a great asset. The new Tug Mercia is far more powerful, capable and fast. And uh, there was a breakdown in perhaps communications and assumptions. So normally the tugs escort down as agreed with the pilot. The pilot was quite happy to carry on on a fast twin screw vessel and the tug Mercia was able to keep up pushing considerable wash and there were significant complaints from the oyster fishermen. Um, I will be reporting the findings to the oyster fishermen, but I think it's a, a very a good illustration how we work collaboratively, collaboratively across the estuary at investigating these types of incidents. And um, all parties are well aware of the root causes and uh, will be well aware that they need to communicate better on departure from, from Turnaware. Um, Trinity House audit undertaken, no non-conformities. Uh, nav aids all in good order. Um, we mentioned the uh, car carriers, auto progress, very detailed and uh, quite intense planning. Um, again, working now, we use this platform, Microsoft Teams, to invite the captains of two ships. You've got two ships that are moored very closely alongside each other with the uh, bridge wings offset. We had to separate them, pull one away from the other and allow the other to sail away because the customer wanted them to go in the wrong order, only by a week difference. But we, we achieved that safely with good uh, communications and hopefully um, it was a, an interesting induction for Chris Jones into um, my work with layup ships. Uh, Pride of Burgundy came in, we mentioned her earlier, and, and the auto Pride sailed. Um, projects, Malpas Marine, we've covered that in depth. Thank you board for your support with that. Um, might add to, I uh, might like to add the um, sort of, um, the benefit of the layup ships is there's probably more reserves than mentioned in the in the report because we're doing quite well this year. Um, it's a windfall and addition to reserves for Truro. Um, uh, Church Beach Slipway, I understand that uh, Chris is uh, discussing with Councillor May uh, about uh, options at Church Beach. And we have taken on board that um, seating was an aspiration at Exchequer Key and we have installed two benches with protective traffic uh, bollards um, uh, down at the quay. Uh, we looked at a risk assessment for boy jumping and mooring uh, layup. We have got Hasman in hard copy only in Truro. We're waiting to um, get uh, populated online. I commend Chris for the way he's, he's conducting his um, um, you, uh, you know, the way that we're using Hasman. I was familiar with the platform, but we, we chose not to use it, even though our consultants, Marico, who uh, own and um, sell the software, were keen we took it on board. So I'm sure there'll be a, a, re a really good increase in, in our ability to, uh, to actually review these assessments, risk assessments, and all our mandatory training has been completed. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, um, Mark. That's a really good comprehensive report. Very interesting. Um, any um, questions? I see um, Councillor May has put a comment in the chat box. Any any questions or comments, please? OK, that's great. Um, Chris, anything further to add? Please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just a, a brief overview of some of the other harbours. So Port Truth. Um, we've identified there is a void in the harbour wall, so we've had a, a civil engineer's report um, and now we're looking at uh, corrective action um, to that section of wall. 
Um, there's also some storm damage on the Ukraine base. I'm sure many of you will be familiar with Port Treath and the, uh, the absolute beating it gets in, in storms. Um, and this is basically the, the outcome. So um, yeah, work ongoing really to, to keep the harbour in, in a safe condition. But we're also looking now to install the fish landing crane, having received funding from the MMO. So that's just been finalised this week. Um, so hoping to install that in coming weeks, uh, COVID and contractor permitting. At Port Scatho, some storm damage on the slipway, which is being repaired this month. And the railings, uh, we are going to install railings near Tatum's Cafe, where there's a significant unguarded drop. We've actually marked um, that area off currently with temporary signage whilst we get the railings ready to go in. And at Saltash, there's ongoing communication about devolution of the site to the Saltash Town Council. Hoping to resolve that one uh, in coming months. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, it's funny you say that about Port Scaffo. I remember going there um, a few years ago onto that. I think I know where that drop is, thinking I don't think I'd um I don't think that's really survivable. It's it's just a bit too far high, isn't it? Than what you think really it's pretty yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think there was a bit of um a bit of ownership to be uh, to be taken of it. So um, but in the meantime, we'll certainly get the railings there um, and improve that. Um, as you said, it, it is quite a significant drop there. Mm -hmm. But I mean, also, it's not really part of the harbour, though, is it? But we're still going to we're still going to step in, are we? It's um, it's at the top of a wall, and the wall is ours. Um, is it so oh, I right. think yeah, okay. yeah. A few of these, and um, I, I always believe on Aaron on side of caution, and um, yeah, I'd rather do it than uh, than regret not doing it. Yeah, and it's it, it is quite a it's a busy area, isn't it? It's it's not really a, a port area, operational area. It's more like a public area, so probably just as well. It is, yeah, particularly as the public toilets there are now uh, operating as a cafe as well. Yeah. So there is a, an increase in footballs, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm. yeah. That's where I, I bought a coffee for Tony and Ian, actually, from that cafe when we did a tour with Andy um, back when they joined the board. That's oh, very true. Very I, true. I think it was very, very nice. It was too. Where, where were the pasty? And the pasty, yeah. And there's a reused. Yeah, your reusable cup. Hopefully, Councillor May has promised me a coffee and a pasty at Penryn on the new bench one day as well. So I look forward to it. Excellent. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, well, just one last item on the. Oh, sorry. Um, with the with the reports, I think we just note. Do we just note them? Um, yeah, this one is just to note. So we just need a general consensus. Yeah. So I guess, like as you said before, if anyone is is against that, if they could yeah. just speak up, but otherwise. Doesn't appear to be anybody um, with any concerns, so um, we'll, um, we'll we'll say that that's noted. Thank you very much, everybody. Harbour Thanks, Masters. Chair. Can I can I just add? Actually, I think if any member um, wishes to add any comment about the report, anything they'd like to see, um, or how often they see such reports, I'd, I'd welcome that feedback. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. And yeah, I mean, um, definitely. Um, I'm sure members will. I'm sure members will want this to be a regular thing. Um, do, do, do you think? quarterly is good? I think we could. Uh, we're doing budget monitoring every other month, so perhaps we, we insert this on the months that we don't do budget monitoring, if you're in agreement. That would be, that would be ideal. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the last item on tonight's agenda is page 71, and it's the town deal projects. Um, I know I'm on a town deal board. Um, I sit, well, Rob, Councillor Nolan is as well. Um, um, so we uh, does anyone if anyone else is it might be worth just saying um, if you are it doesn't mean that we have a, a conflict of interest uh, councillor brown and councillor may have indicated you know i think we can still speak but obviously bear in mind we are board on the board as well on the town deal board so um, obviously just be mindful of that but we are here tonight as harbour's board members so um, you know, that's that's where we are tonight. And um, I'll hand straight over to Chris um, for a, an update, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so the report provides a background of the town deal, and you'll notice that there are four uh, places in Cornwall that were identified. Three of those we have harbours in, these being Penzance, Truro and St Ives. Um, I think I will jump straight to the overview of projects for each of the harbours. Um, so we look first at Truro, where construction of a bridge linking Lightridge Key and Boss Caron Park is being considered to provide a crossing for cyclists and pedestrians and that will link into a wider network of, of loops. Uh, the bridge would lift to allow vessels to navigate as required and we've had some discussions so far about how that would work and, and the, um, 
the operational requirements around that. Look, would you like to add anything to that as, as a member? Yeah, I'd better just say another interest. I'm a director of the company that is submitting the idea for the bridge, but I'm a non-executive, non-unpaid director. Um, and uh, I am also the lead, the chairman of the sustainable transport group, which is kind of handling those things. But again, I, I'm absolutely con confident that there is nothing personal for me to gain. Okay. So, uh, yeah, but 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 yeah, I mean, is there? Um, uh, yeah, I'll, all, all I can say is that the bridge idea is is um, something that's been in Truro for a long time, for over 25 years. Um, lots of different organisations and people have tried to um, get it done, and um, it has a huge backing from the community. And the most recent sort of attempt is to get it done through this town deal. So um, you know, we're we're very very grateful for. Um, the, the Chris Jones, Andy Brigden before Chris and Captain Killingback for their sort of um, yeah. informed kind of assistance and um, insight into this idea. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have included an appendix to uh, an overview of the project with a, a drawing that I draw your attention to. And for those who aren't familiar with the location, I've added a map on the rear. Um, there is a star on there, but uh, I forgot it was going to be printed black and white. So, but if you if you look where the word Neum is, just to the right, you can see where that location is. Thank you. Um, if I move then on to the second Truro project, which is the development of the around area around Worth T Key, Town Key and Garris Wharf. So this is looking to improve birthing facilities and birthing availability for visiting and resident craft. And the project would see significant uh, volume of dredging to reopen a disused berth. And I'll draw your attention to Appendix 2 with further detail on that project. Can I ask if there's any question on either of those two projects before we move elsewhere? Let's move on, I think. OK, the next uh, area that we look at is St Ives, where there's been a project to look at improving facilities for fishermen working from the harbour and include a facility to allow direct sail. So you can see the details there in Appendix 3. And finally, Penzance, uh, I've made a proposal to the Town Deal Board in line with the Penzance Harbour Management Plan. The focus is on clearly defining the role of the harbour and areas of the harbour and enhancing the offering to the recreational boating sector. The project would also see development of a dedicated freight terminal for the Isles of City Steamship Company um, for their operations. But key here, would it, it would improve traffic management in the area uh, by bringing waiting lorries off the road, direct off to discharge and then continue on their uh, way. Thank you, Chair. Brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Um, Councillor Brown. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, like Penryn, uh, Newquay have got a fairly newly formed uh, town team, uh, which I sit on. Uh, and uh, whilst there isn't a specific project around Newquay Harbour at the moment, I'm sure there will be going forward. So yeah. I would suggest that on page 71, where we've got the four towns that we add and win in UK. Um, yeah, does Penryn actually have a the town deal as well? The no, it's place minutes? shaping, place shaping. Okay. It's, it's, it's to do with the vitality of the high streets. Okay, I think that that's a slightly different thing. No, uh, but we are, we are inviting, hopefully Mark or Chris, um, we'll be able to come along at some point to one of our meetings. OK, brilliant. Well, we'll add the place shaping, Penryn's place shaping to that to that thing, because that sort of, a, yes, that, that would sit well alongside the town deal. Um, is that all right, Chris? We'll, we'll kind of have a, we'll have an update on that with, with the others and um, we'll add new key in as well. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely, no problem at all. And Jeff, I'd draw your attention to the work in St Ives. I think we should monitor the, the success of that facility. Um, and consider similar for Nuki in the future. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank can you, Chair. I, I, yeah, thank, thanks, Chris. Um, just before we, we, there's two recommendations, but just before, just um, just to say that it is a the town deal fund. It's quite a novel funding, um, I, you know, thing that's happening. I don't think it, this sort of fund has uh, ever been um, applied before in Cornwall. It's it's uh, it's quite different, but it, it's very dynamic and it's all volunteers. 
and um, obviously with with the help of people like um, our maritime team as well. So um, thanks very much for everybody who's involved with that and um, hopefully things will progress. So there are two recommendations. Um, Angela, is that, I mean, they're both kind of similar. Should we just do uh, them at the same time? Yeah, we do them at the same time. So it's just to note, and I think it's that some of the board agrees to have updates at future meetings. Yeah, um, if everyone's happy with that, then I'm, um, can I just ask for a proposer and a seconder then in that case? Um, Tony and um, Councillor May, I think. Lovely. Tony Gerd and Councillor May. Yep. Can I do a quick um, roll call vote, Chairman? Yeah, please do, yeah. Please. Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Nolan. Four. Councillor Rich. Uh, four. Councillor Robinson. Four. Tony Good. Four. Tristan Jones. Four. Ian Shipley. Four. Jeff Wilson. Or that's unanimous, Chairman. That's great, Angela. Thank you very much. There is no other business um, for us to consider this evening. So I'm going to close this meeting and wish everyone well and um, uh, have a have a really good, safe time until we see you again. I think Captain Killingback, you've got your hand up. Yeah, um, Chairman. Sorry, I'd just like to uh, bring to the board's attention that their, their support was fundamental in a successful prosecution of a jet skier, which has been reported by Cornwall Council Media. And uh, I think it lays a marker down. Give credit to the individual. He did plead guilty to four charges, but I commend to the board Kingsley Keat and, um, and um, Dave Forty for their help. And uh, I think it was a really good result. I nearly mentioned it um, earlier in the agenda, but I missed Mr. Trick and uh, you moved on, Chair. So I just thought I'd bring it to the board's attention. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, while we're still in the meeting, that, um, that was part of yeah, it. Um, I, will, I will thank you, Captain Killingback and Chris Jones and Kingsley um, and the, the other guy, I've forgotten his name as well, sorry, but the, the, the legal team at Cornwall Council and it was a really sterling effort um, and uh, I'm sure the whole board will wish to thank you. Um, I've had comments already from from board members on it. Um, Councillor Brown's just put one in the chat box saying great result. It really is good and it just shows that we're not going to tolerate that kind of dangerous, stupid behaviour in our harbours and we are going to prosecute. And uh, I actually had a call from somebody in the um, MOD police actually the other day and I think I've put you in touch with them, Mark, because they're really, really keen to learn some, learn some, um, some tips from you anyway. Well, how, how you doing? That one up. I haven't today. I'm busy planning a, a, a quite an intense move tomorrow, so I will follow up. But thanks very much. That's okay. You're welcome. Yeah, no rush. And um, okay. And um, and uh, thanks again to everybody um, for coming tonight. Um, I'm going to close the meeting now. Stay well, everybody, and um, we'll see you soon, hopefully. Okay. Take care, everybody. And you, Lewitt. Well done. Good meeting. Cheers, Rio. Thanks very much. Bye, everyone. Bye. You bye bye. bye.